First thing I'm doing is marking out a list of or the main journals and the rod journals, and I'm just miking them one way, to writing it down, miking it the other way, writing it down to make sure everything's round. So this crank was polished, and so far everything's been looking good. So we take those numbers, and then later on we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna put the rod bearings in here, tighten them down, measure in there at the bore mic. And then we're looking for this clearance. These are the rod clearances, main clearance. Maximum competition's a little looser. So anything tighter than this is gonna be bad. It's always okay to be a little bit on the loose side. to go into the block this tab is offset and there's a notch in the block for it so line that up and then just push these in until both ends are flush like that and the caps are the same thing these are the notches centered so you know you can't put this in the block and you're gonna block your oil galley passageway which would be bad so just line this up Just like that. Just make sure it's flush. And then on these, there's an arrow pointing to the front of the block, and then we got a number four. So that's the fourth one back. So we'll go on like this. And then you get your bolts in, 70 foot pounds. All right, I got the crank all measured up. We use this to clean up the surface of the oil pan, and then we sanded where the bearings sit and the caps, sanded the caps, put new bearings in. And we torque this down, 70 foot pounds. What we're doing now is we're gonna measure the diameter of this bearing. What you do, the book says one and a half thou to two thou clearance. So I just took the numbers from my crank, added two thou, we set the mic to this so it's at 2.999. And then we're using a dial bore gauge. You set this up so that it reads zero. Like that. And then, so we're going to see what these measure. If you twist this, you're going to get a bad reading. Like, way, you can easily go way too much. So I just put it in here straight at an angle, like straight up and down but tipped at an angle and then just pull it towards you until the needle bounces it keeps dropping below four so we're at about three and a half to three so but this is set at two thou more than the crank so we're actually at five thou clearance which is like three thou too much but the crank measures right where it should be, and these are stock size bearings, so there's really not much we can do. So we're just gonna bolt it in, check the end plate, see how much that has, and then it's pretty much, it should be fine. Now if we were running high horsepower, you might wanna do something about that, but for this application, I think it'll be fine. All right, coat all your bearings with this Permatex Ultra Slick assembly lube. So 
yeah, as far as the bearings go, you want to put assembly lube on everything. I wouldn't use just oil. The oil we're running is has extra zinc in it. That's really going to be key for breaking in the cam. Um, these thrust bearings, we kind of had to tap them in with a mallet. They were in there kind of tight. But the thrust bearings are thicker. They got some copper on them. This is what holds the crank from moving in and out, forward and backward. So yeah, we're going to coat all this. Um, we got to put the rear main seal in. Yeah. So there's two different styles of these rear main caps. We have this style where you're going to want the seal that has these little extensions that go inside this groove here. And you want to put a dab of black silicone on here. Now there's two different kinds of black silicone. There's just this kind, the regular black, but you're going to want the ultra black, which is a lot more resistant to oil. So this is your rear main seal. I mean, if this thing starts leaking, you're going to have oil leaks on your pan. And the only way you can really truly fix it is replacing this. And that's a lot of work, so we're going to want to use the stuff resistant to oil. So we're going to pop that one in. Another thing you want to have the chamfer facing forward. So this has a chamfer facing the bearing side. So you're going to want to have this chamfer facing that way too. So yeah, we're just going to put a dab of silicone on the ends of this and then put the crank in. Alright, once you get all the caps on, make sure all your arrows are pointing forward and all your numbers are right. check the end play after you got all these tightened down so we got an indicator set up it's supposed to be is it two to five two, thou two to five thousandths so we kind of pry on the crank so it's all the way back this way we zero this out and then we're going to pry it forward what's that going to show is how wore out your bearings are or the lips on the crank your thrust bearing so if it's moving forward and backward a lot that's not good so right now we're at about three thou so that's within spec that's like perfect zero three to four if I really flex on it but if I let it settle it's at two so that looks good okay next we're gonna be checking the ring end gap what you do so you put the ring in the cylinder you can take a piston that has a ring on it and this is going to square the ring up in the bore. That's what we're checking. Okay, so this is the book we have that cho shows everything we need to know. We're looking here, piston rings, 18 thou top gap and 30 thou if you're running big shots of nitrous, 16 thou second, 16 thou third. So we got the 18 thou feeler gauge and we still have a ways to go these rings are at about 10 thou I'll show you how we make this gap bigger I just took a piece of steel here with some 150 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna butt the ring up and sand it you want to make sure you're doing this evenly so you're not filing too much off the outside compared to the inside but so when we're gapping these rings right now we got them we got everything labeled one through six we're putting number one piston ring in cylinder one right now I'm on number three so 
don't use the same cylinder for every ring. If your piston ring's going in cylinder three, make sure you're setting your gap to cylinder three. Now, if if this is a used block, hone out your cylinders, see how much of a ridge you have, and then take a flashlight up in here, and then you can look around the edge of the ring, and you can see, if you see any gaps, that means your cylinder's out around. But these, these cylinders are all machined and honed, so that looks good. Just a thing I wanted to point out. Another thing, when we took the pistons out, we noticed starting to get scuffed up. I didn't really think this was too bad. I mean, it's getting scuffed up, but the machine shop said that, yeah, you're going to want to replace these. They'll start to rattle. And then the bores are probably 20 thou worn, maybe 15 to 20, so he said you might as well go 30 thou over. So that's what we did. So right now we're measuring the rod bearings. Got these torqued down to 40 foot-pounds. Grab the mic, check it. We're at, this is the minimum, this is the maximum. We're at 1.003, so that's right where it should be. All right, we're installing the pistons. We got a semi lube on this and the cap bearing and we put a semi lube and oil on the wrist pin and then we put oil on the rings now the letters on this rod face forward and then the dot on the piston face forward to the front of the block so I'm gonna first we're just gonna put this in Apply pressure down on this, tighten it up. This is so that the rings will fit, they'll just slide right through the bore because the piston rings stick out more than the piston. Tap it down, and then Travis is holding the bottom of it so that the studs, the rod studs, don't hit the crank journal. We rotated the crank so that the journal is all the way as far down as it'll be. And now we hit this down lightly. If it stops, uh, pull this back off and do it again. You might have a ring that's not going in right. So that's good. That one seems to be good. Next we installed the oil pump, we put blue Loctite on these bolts, gasket goes on. Before we did that though we filled this up with assembly lube and you can also put oil in there. That way when you start the engine it'll just shoot assembly lube all through the whole thing and that's a good thing. To do. Okay so the manual says to heat up the crank gear to about 500 degrees for 15-20 minutes and um, we've had it in there for at least 20 minutes so what we're gonna do manual says to heat up the gear and then pound it on with a piece of pipe because it's a press fit onto the crank here um, you have to do this first before you put the cam in Oh wait. Oh wow, it actually went on right here. Let me tap it. Make sure. Wow, that went on really easy. Watch out. Ow. <laughs> yeah, it's on there. Wow. I didn't think it would go on that easy. Yep, it's on. When I when it pressed it on, you could hear it hissing. I'm like, oh it's starting to shrink, we gotta go. <laughs> and then it just slid on, so that's nice. 
Yeah, if we didn't heat it up, there's like no way we would get that yeah, eye. That's it's a, it's on there. Okay, now we can install the crank, the cam. This is the cam lubricant we're using. You don't just want to put, you don't even want to put just zinc oil on the cam or the lifters. You want to put this stuff in because the break in on these flat tappet lifters is really critical. I'm just gonna install this. Something I should have did before we put the cam all the way in is get this lined up, get the number one piston in at top dead center. Piston's gonna come up. There's gonna be a spot where it doesn't really move. That's where the rod is rolling over in the stroke, and then it's gonna start coming back down. Right there, top dead center. So now we want to line up these marks. All right, so now the lines are marked up. I mean, the marks are lined up. <laughs> All right, now that we got the crank and the cam in. Decided to take a little break, cook some steak, because I rhyme all the time, and it's great. All right, that's about it for part one. We're gonna try to keep this short. We got the bottom end assembled, got the oil pump in. All we have to do next is, we don't have any epoxy right now. All we gotta do is epoxy the oil pump pickup into the oil pump, but we're waiting on some epoxy I have to get. And as far as the oil pan, we have all the gaskets, but we're going to sandblast the outside of it so that it'll be ready for paint. And then we're also going to sandblast the intake manifold, exhaust manifold, all at the same time. So we'll stop it here, keep it short, stay tuned for part two. We're going to put the cylinder head on next. We're going to put the lifters in, push rods, and we're going to set the valves, do all other things, water pump. We also got to blast the water pump. Thanks for watching.